mute. We'll start with an opening statement from Coach, and then we'll uh, have you guys ask questions here in the room. Uh, big group. Appreciate everybody coming out. Um, you know, obviously, overall, I felt really good about the recruiting class and, and how we finished it, finished it up. I thought Chimdi was a really good get for us uh, late. Um, guy that we think has tremendous upside, has got position flexibility, whether it's tackle or guard. Um, really enjoyed getting to know him and his family. His mom has done a phenomenal job, not just with Chimdi, but really uh, all of our children, all four of our children has done, done a phenomenal job. Uh, his high school, Dundalk High School, um, you know, really did a good job. So uh, to me, with offensive linemen, it's typically hard to find guys with that type of uh, length and athleticism. You know, Coach Trout got a chance to watch him play basketball. We were very impressed. And then the other thing was watching his tape. He's got a nasty streak with a lot of times on the offensive line. That's hard to find uh, guys that are trying to finish guys on tape. So I thought it was a really good get for us to, to really end the class. Um, and then obviously you guys know we're, we're, we're kind of moved on. Um, pleased with how this season finished up, but that's behind us now. You know, technically, you know, a lot of ways we look at it kind of officially behind us now. We started winter workouts this morning, had our first winter workout. That went well. I think you guys have probably seen a lot of the position um you know, position posts by their position coaches this morning on t terms of who was the competitor of the day and things like that. So we'll have eight of these winter workout sessions. Uh, the way the calendar fell this year, we usually will try to come back from spring break and have one or two sessions to get the sin in out of them and then get into then get into spring ball but the way the calendar falls this year and when the spring game is we're not really able to do that so we'll come back uh from spring break and, and get going right away uh sometimes people break up spring ball and do a few days before spring break and then you know finish it afterwards we've always tried to to do it after spring break uh but still give us enough time to get back out on the road recruiting so I like where we're at. Uh, obviously, we got a ton of work to do. You know, I would say some of the the focus, you know, of the off season, uh, probably the biggest one, you know, is leadership and really identifying leadership uh, as a staff and players as well, uh, being transparent and open about that, um, and then really working hard at trying to resolve that. I thought our leadership last year was as good as we've had uh, in my 12 years as a head coach. I thought those guys just did a phenomenal job. And I think for most everybody in this room, you probably could have went into the season and you guys probably could have picked out you know, who the leaders were going to be. It was pretty obvious. We had really established guys uh, not only from a playing perspective, but also from a leadership perspective in our program. And, and I wouldn't say that we have that right now from a leadership standpoint. we got to identify who those guys are. They need to have strong voices. We need to be aligned um, you know, with the players and the players aligned from a leadership standpoint with the coaching staff. And I thought last year that was as good as it's been. So that, that needs to be a, a major point of emphasis. Uh, on offense, defense, and special teams uh, because we're not going to be one of these teams or one of these programs that you hear early in the season that the coaches are saying, well, we need to develop leadership. It's too late to do it at that point. we we got to start working on it, identifying it right away. So appreciate you guys being here. Uh, look forward to questions. And, again, uh, appreciate everybody showing up. Thank you. Hey, James, how are you? Good, Tyler. How are you? Good. You obviously covered Chimdi. Um, back in December, though, you mentioned defensive back and wide receiver as two other priority positions that you felt like you still had needs to fill. Can you talk about how you've been able to address those and specifically with some of the guys you've already added to the roster? Yeah, so as you guys know, there'll, there'll be a second wave. You know, there'll be a second wave uh, after after spring ball, um, which there'll, there'll, there'll be some opportunities at that point. Uh, our academic calendar starts earlier than most. So a lot of times, like when you talk about these championship teams, um, you know, the, the national championship game, a lot of guys go in the portal after after that game. Um, and we're typically you know, pretty far along. So for us, our window 
to get guys, you know, uh, in the school, accepted to school, starting classes. We have a smaller window than most from what I've seen. Um, so we got to be aggressive there. But then, you know, I think there's going to be some opportunities as well uh, on the back end. You know, wide receiver. Um, I will tell you that Malik has been impressive so far. Um, Malik McLean tested extremely well um, our, in our baseline testing when these guys arrive. He's also just always got a huge smile on his face. Um, I know Coach Hagen's had him as the competitor of the day, so that's been positive. And all the feedback from the strength coaches as well as the, the guys uh, has, been, has been really good with him. What was the other position you said? Back. So I guess in this case, Storm Duck. Yeah, so Storm's another one. You guys will get to know him. You know, Storm is very businesslike. Um, you know, uh, academically, we got an academic report this morning. He's killing it. Um, to be honest with you, Malik McLean is as well. Um, doesn't say a whole lot. Is just kind of about his business. It was like that during the recruiting process with him. Um, and he's been that way since he's shown up on campus. Everybody's been really impressed. We've been fortunate that the guys that we have gone into the transfer portal have been really good fits culturally. If you look, if you look the last couple of years, and so far it, it seems to be the same way with these two, you know, these two guys. And that's from hearing from our academic staff, hearing from their peers, the players, uh, as well as the strength staff. And then you know, early indication is just one day, but but today was pretty good. And his testing numbers were really good um, in the baseline testing as well. Hey, Coach, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, two quick ones for me about national impact. When you think about playing in the Rose Bowl, we talked a lot about what a tool this could be for this program, you know, getting out to the West Coast and kind of showing off what Penn State is. Are recruits asking about the Rose Bowl experience? Are they interested in that? Then also this week you have Miles Sanders playing in a Super Bowl. How big is that for the program in terms of being able to point to a guy and say, look, he could go win a Super Bowl? Yeah, I'm not going to bring up the statistic that you guys love about the Super Bowl. I won't bring that one up. Um, but, yeah, Miles Miles has been awesome, and uh, we're very proud of him. You know, he's, he's, he's done really well, not just on the field and being an impact player for the Eagles, but really how he's represented himself off the field as well. He's been like that the whole way, all the way since we recruited him out of high school. He's just been a phenomenal represent, representative of Penn State and our football program. Uh, and I'm not surprised with the type of year that he is having. He really kind of fits the model of what everybody's looking for now, specifically in the NFL, is a guy that not only can run the ball between the tackles, but also get the ball to the edge, but also can be an impact in the passing game. He takes great pride in his pass protection. So, um, Really happy for him. Uh, and then your other question was about the Rose Bowl. Um, you know, people don't specifically bring up the Rose Bowl, but obviously everybody watched the game. Um, and I think it's it's impactful, and I think it's it's helpful, obviously. We, we were able to have an open practice when we were out there, so we had some guys come out to practice, although we weren't really able to interact with them based on how the rules are. Um, I do think that was helpful. We had a young man that actually just flew out from a junior day that was was at the practice. So um, that helps. Um, you know, I think the other thing that that is that's obviously impacts that, um, you know, is is our location, you know, and, and I think you've seen some things over the years with our airport here growing um, different flight options and things like that. But that's 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 a big part of it. You know, the more flight options and, and the more flight uh, opportunities to come right into state college is helpful. And then obviously, you know, some of the other areas, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Harrisburg is important, too. But that's that's probably as big of a factor as anything in terms of national recruiting. James, with respect to leadership, you're so young at quarterback. How do you see that developing at that position? And do you enter winter workouts with a specific pecking order or is there a clean slate from last season? Yeah, you know, I, I think obviously across the board, we we would say that there is a, a, a clean slate to a degree uh, that there's going to be competition kind of across the board that all these at all these positions. But as you know, we're, we're going to have to put somebody out there first. Um, based on how the season ended and 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 Drew's role, 
uh, last year, then that would be him. Um, but we're going to need both of those guys, specifically Prabula and Alar. It's too, it's too early to speak on Smolik, but we're going to need both of those guys not only competing, but also taking on a significant leadership role. Again, no, no one cares that they're young. They're in that position. Uh, and a big part of that position is leadership. And I thought Sean did a great job with that. So, um, you know, for us, I don't want them to go from zero to 100, just kind of start to work into that role and, and take responsibility and, and have a plan and be intentional like everything else we do. Uh, but but I think I think Drew and, and Bo are ready for that. Good afternoon. Hi, Rich. James, you obviously have talked about the class of 2022 who, who are going to be available today. Um, what impact now that you have a time to step back, what impact did they have on last season? What impact do you expect them to have on this season? Yeah, you know, I think obviously, you know, there's a ton of those guys that ended up playing and not just playing, but playing in prominent roles. We've had guys play in years past, uh, but maybe they were a backup, you know, but there just seemed to be a large number in this class that that was able to play and not just play, but take on a primary role and, and be impactful. So um, obviously, whenever that happens, you know, you go into you go into the next season, you know, feeling confident because you have, you know, a ton of guys coming back that. Um, have been able to make plays and make plays on a significant stage. Um, and if they were really, if they were, you know, pretty successful as true freshmen, then you would hope that experience would lead them to having even more success in, in year two. So, um, you know, we felt like it was a good class. It ended up being as good of a class as we thought, or maybe even a little bit better. Um, and a lot of those guys just came in with a very mature approach uh, and we're willing to do what it took to to play and play well. A lot of guys, everybody says they want to play as freshmen, but very few people are willing to do the things necessary to get it done, and that is mentally and physically. Uh, we have 12 guys that came in in this class at mid-semester, so that helps you know, to see if those guys will have a chance. But I would also say to you, you even look at last year, you know, there's a there's a – pretty good number of those guys that did not come in early uh, and still were able to make a significant impact. I mean, denies obviously a really good example of that. Uh, but there was a number of those guys that did not come in early and were still able to impact, you know, our program and our roster. So, um, you know, the, the head start helps, but I think I think we'll also get some guys out of that, that second wave too. What are you expecting in this year? What kind of impact would you say that this class the new class we just signed? Yeah, I think like like I th I thought I answered your question, but maybe maybe I didn't. Is you know whenever those guys come in and play as true freshmen and take on prominent roles as true freshmen, you would you would think that in year year two that they'll be be able to take it on even more of a prominent role and even more of an impactful role learning from the experience the year before and building on it. it's not always the case but i think i think you know you would you would like to feel that way and you'd like to say that so um we had a number of those guys that were able to you know have prominent roles as true freshmen whether they were starting or not and now hopefully they can take the next step and be a dominant player in the big 10 on and on a national stage and then some of those guys that maybe didn't have prominent roles but played now hopefully they can take the next step as well and then there'll be some guys that we didn't talk about a whole lot that from year one to year two the light bulb will come on for and and those guys will be you know you know interesting stories you know throughout the spring for us to talk about hey james hey neil your flashlight is on your phone just so you know <laughs> i have no idea how to shut it off <laughs> So the, it's the button that uh, Audrey looks like help me eventually. it's a button that looks like a flashlight. You just yeah. touch that, and that turns it on and off. You're confusing me. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, piggybacking on uh, Mark's question, with how young you're going to be at quarterback, um, are you comfortable with that? Is the transfer portal door closed in that, or or can you bring in somebody who, you know, at whatever level had had. Uh, some experience just as an insurance policy with uh, 
you know, with the, all the parts that you guys have and how highly you'll be ranked this year. Just, just curious. Yeah. In a perfect world, you'd love to have, you'd love to have, you know, obviously a little bit more, you know, experience and a little bit more age in that room. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's about talent. And I think we're talented in that room. Um, I think the challenge of the transfer portal, I think you can do it. And I think there's some, some options that we can look at and are still open to. Um, but I wouldn't say based on how that room looks that maybe it's, it's, is attractive to a lot of the quarterbacks out there that we would want to bring in. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see how that thing, you know, plays out, but, um, but you never know. We'd be, we'd be open obviously at every single position to try to bring in some guys in coach, what went into your decision to make a change at receivers coach? And then what made you make the choice you ultimately did when it was time to make that new hire? Yeah. You know, I, as you guys know, I try to share as much as I possibly can with you guys that, that I think is, is appropriate. I don't necessarily think that um, is appropriate in this in this setting, um, but I will tell you, you know, our excitement for for Marcus Hagens, um, you know, is really high. You know, um, if you look at his resume, um, he's got a really good resume. When you talk to uh, whether it's NFL uh, head coaches, if you talk to college head coaches if you talk to search firms and things like that you know a guy that played quarterback and played quarterback at a high level for really good coaches uh in a complicated west coast system played wide receiver in college and quarterback in college played five years a wide receiver in the nfl um and then 11 years at his alma mater and beloved there I mean, everybody you talk to uh, just loves Marcus. And to be honest with you, very similar in how um, Coach Poindexter is, is is people feel about you know Coach Poindexter. And then having Coach Poindexter on my staff, and and I think you guys know how I feel about him and his family, and for them and for him specifically to vouch for Marcus and, and the family. Um, you know, I, that carried a lot of weight. And then you go through the interview process. You know, you go through the interview process. We talked to uh, a good number of guys and um, it just it just became obvious um, that this was the guy that that we needed to bring into our room and kind of within our family. Uh, and so far, so good. It's it's been really good having him around. Um you know, I think it's it's going to be exciting getting his family to move here as well. Uh, but I think you guys are going to really enjoy getting to know him. He just ultimately the most important thing is you bring the best people you possibly can into your organization. Um, you know, the most talented people, and then you help them grow. And you know, I think he's pretty far along professionally. But I think there's some areas that we can help him as well. And part of that is just when you've been at the same institution your entire career just getting out and and being in a different environment also helps you because it forces you out of your comfort zone. Robert. James, how has the rest of the wide receiver room responded to you guys adding Malik? And if you were to hypothetically add a second receiver, what would that player look like? Really good. Be a really good one. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, we, we, we're very transparent. I think that's, that's the other thing is you, you, you have conversations and, and let people know what you're doing and why, um, you know, we kind of have examples of both. We've, we've brought some guys into the transfer portal, um, who haven't, you know, played significant roles have been more complimentary pieces to the, to the current room. And we brought some guys in that have come in and, and started and been able to make an impact. So I think the biggest thing is being transparent with your guys in your current program because ultimately you, you want to be you want to do right by the guys in your in your program, um, you know. But to me, we also have a responsibility to all the guys on the team and all the positions to go out and and try to bring as much talent in as we possibly can. Iron sharpens iron at practice every single day, and it's going to put us in the best position to achieve our goals. So. Um, you know, we also talk to those those transfers when they come in about um, how to do that, how to adjust to Penn State. 
um, be respectful of the vets in the room um, and and then start to try to kind of feel your path but you don't need to come in kind of with your guns blazing and um, you know and you know gradually kind of work into that role and that position Malik's you know, a very mature kid. He's like I said earlier, he's always got a smile on his face. Um, so I think he's been received really well. Both, both, you know, really all four of those guys have been, but specifically him and Storm have been received really well. Um, you know, the two specialists we brought in, um, you know, that's a little bit different situation, a little bit like the quarterback discussion we had. You're bringing in some veterans in the room that have kicked in games before. Um, and allow maybe some of the younger players either time to, to develop or or to compete with them and 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 take the job. Um, but but so far so good. All the feedback that I've gotten. Uh, where were we, Mike? Hi, James. Hey, Mike. Um, last July, uh, you had that deal where the players brought in the guy to talk to him about union unionization issues and uh a person you know looking at that from the outside could maybe have thought that was potentially divisive apparently it wasn't uh why do you think it wasn't and what did you do to sort of manage that situation yeah um i i think the biggest thing in anything is is communication you know is is communication so having some very honest thoughtful conversations uh, from both sides and both directions. I think ultimately the way that thing played out um, is I think there could have been a little bit better communication, obviously, but once we were able to, um, I think Sean and others realized that ultimately I want what's best uh, for them. I want, I want what's best for our program. I want what's best for college football, um, and I want bet what what's best for student athletes. I, I truly do, and um, we were able to have some really good conversations. And I think the other thing that became obvious was also um, that I wanted to make sure that they were protected too. Um, so, you know, these things are, are challenging. They're difficult conversations to have, but I think they're important. And the way I describe it a little bit on, on a team, whether it's a very challenging morning workout or whether it's a potentially divisive conversation, uh, a team and a family are very similar. Every time you get through some type of adversity, whether it's a challenging physical uh, thing like a like a winter workout, like a morning workout, or whether it is a tough topic that you need to work through together. Every time you get through those things as a family, every time you get through those things as a team, it brings you closer together. And we were able to take a challenging topic and subject matter uh, and work through it. And um, I think in a lot of ways it, it probably helped us. Audrey. James, um, going back to Marcus Haggins for a second, uh, what's the benefit when you bring in a guy like that in terms of Marcus the recruiter with being so well connected in Virginia, his home state, and it's a state that's been, you guys have done a really nice job in as well. What's the benefit of that? Yeah, I think that factors in, right? Um, you know, I've always been a believer all the way back to my first staff. Uh, I remember talking to to David Williams about this at, at Vanderbilt all the way back to my first staff that everybody has to do both and do both at a high level. You have to you have to be able to coach um, and you have to be able to recruit. And some staffs are built where you know, this guy's only going to coach and not recruit or this guy is going to be the recruiter and, and maybe maybe, you know, not to coach. Um and I've never believed that. I believe, you know, your staff, you need to put it together where everybody is pulling their weight uh, in both areas. And then obviously, you know, we have to take advantage of 
people's strengths and and backgrounds. So obviously we'll have you know Marcus recruiting in Virginia, and and that state has been very good to us. Um, so we'll continue to do that. But obviously Marcus is going to have to take on some other responsibilities too, besides uh, Virginia. But that factors into it. There's there's no doubt about it. I think if we can hire people that are from the footprint. Um, it, it helps with the transition where if you hire somebody that's got no experience in the footprint uh, and it takes them a year to get comfortable or to build those types of relationships, uh, then you don't get the return on your investment, um, you know, maybe as, as uh, early as you hope. Two more. We'll go Corey and then we'll go Daniel. James, will it be feasible to have an early signing period once we get to 2024 and there's there's a 12 team playoff? Could you imagine? preparing for playoff games in December while you've got to finish up early signing period. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's a fair point. I, I guess, I guess, and I think you guys have heard me say this before. I, I was a big believer in the first model that we recommended when I was in the sec and that the early signing period was, was only that like it wasn't official visits, nothing changed except for an early signing period. And the philosophy for that was the kid who grew up go, wanting to go to Penn State his whole life and was going to go to Penn State, let that guy sign. He doesn't need the official visits. He doesn't need any of those types of things. But once we kind of went um, to moving everything up, not only our early signing period, but also uh, but also official visits and those types of things it's it's obviously become challenging i guess you could make the argument though uh all you're doing is taking the same problems that the two teams that were playing in the national championship have and and widening that uh those those teams have had to had to deal with that uh the teams the four teams that were in the playoffs have had to deal with that the whole time now you're going to have 12 um, so you could make, you could make the argument that you're just, you're just causing the same challenge just for a few more teams. Well, yeah, again, that goes back to my conversations that I've had with you guys before about, about, um, staff sizes and things like that. That's why you've seen staffs, staff sizes increases, uh, increase. Uh, but I think you bring up a good point. I think it's, it's obviously what's being discussed and there's a lot of people looking at different models and different things. What I also don't want to do is every single year we keep changing the calendar. Um, you know, at some point we gotta, we gotta stick with what we got and start to kind of get used to working around the calendar. But I do think it's a, it's a fair conversation point. James, James you, you talked about Marcus spending a lot of time uh, at one place. What will change for him, do you think, coming from Virginia to Penn State? And then on top of that, what is it about him, do you think, can help elevate this room that, that you have right now? Yeah, so I, I think that the first thing is, you know, when you've been in the same place, you know, your entire professional career and even personal um, you know, you, you know where to go for everything, whatever you need, you know where to go. You have a contact or a connection uh, that can help you, um, you know, with what with whatever you may need. And it makes you extremely efficient. That's where consistency on the staff is so important because everybody knows how things operate and how things work. He's going to bring some things in from his experience at UVA that is valuable, and I'm going to want that feedback from him, and, and we'll ask for that feedback. Um, but there's obviously going to be some things that we do differently that he hasn't experienced before that I think are going to you know push him outside of his uh, – you know, comfort zone. I, I will say this, it's, you know, it's not like he's been a part of the same staff for all 11 years. So he's had a couple different head coaches to work for a couple different offensive coordinators to work for different schemes and things like that. So it won't be as challenging from that perspective. And I think the fact that he's got coach Poindexter and his family here, that will help as well because he'll understand what that transition is going to be like um, in terms of the room. You know, I'm just a big believer, you know, that if you look at the NFL and you look at college football, um, 
the room and the position that I think can be maybe the most impactful right now is the wide receivers. Those guys at the NFL level as well as college um, are able to to change the game and change the game quickly. Um, you make you make one person miss on the perimeter as a chance to go 80 yards. Um, if you're a running back, you're probably going to have to make two or three guys miss before you go 80. So the game has become such a space game. Uh, you have guys on the outside that can go 80 at any moment. Um, that changes defensive coordinators. That puts the fear in people. Uh, and the, honestly, the other thing is it impacts the running game. You know, when you're able to have guys on the outside that people don't feel like they can match up with in one on one situations, then they have to put a safety over the top, remove that safety from the box, which now creates more of a balanced <clears throat> defense in terms of what they're trying to defend and what they're trying to stop. So I actually think it's going to be as impactful as our running game as it will be in our passing game. But that's to me what what I'm looking for is I'm looking for us to develop and recruit a room uh, that people in our conference are fearful of uh, and also on a national on a national scale as well.